All right, so in today's class, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a DIY palette organizer. Uh, I use mine for keys and mail, but I'm sure you could use them for coats and other things, lanyards, all that stuff. But uh, as far as getting palettes go, I get these from work. Um, if you can't find palettes from your work or you don't work in a warehouse like I do, uh, usually farm stores or mechanic shops or things around you that are uh, factories most of the times or warehouses will have pallets that they're just throwing away or giving away or sometimes trashed. I would suggest taking those. Uh, there are, however, some pallets that I would not suggest taking as far as like chemical pallets or stuff like that. They most of the times will have either A, chemicals on them or B, pesticides around them, which are not good to breathe in or um, to have in your house by any means. But these are food safe pallets. Uh, these came from milk pallets, basically. So what I'm doing is I'm tearing them apart right now. And if you've ever tore apart one of these pallets, I'll tell you right now, it is a pain. They lay these boards across these 2x4s that they cut out. And they shoot them in with a nail gun. And what happens is they're all strung together with kind of a wire or a... Um, I guess you could say a wire. And they they create these little barbs... Now, what it's doing is its job. It's it's supposed to keep the nail in. So you're going to struggle getting these off. As you can see, I, um, I have troubles every once in a while. Also, I like to either save my nails in a tin can or a bag or something like that. Um, that way you're not dropping them on the ground or leaving them in the trash or in your driveway somewhere. So keep that in mind as well. You don't want to be running any of these over. Uh, but hopefully you guys can find some pallets. Basically, I'm trying to do this and show you guys ways to DIY things in your life. Some things, it, it brings more sentimental value sometimes to your, to your items in your home uh, to say that you built them. And by no means is this going to be a perfect organizer for all of your things. Uh, it's meant to be rustic. You can sand them down and make everything level if you're a perfectionist, but I wanted that rustic look, you know, the... Um, the raw wood from the, the palettes and the different shades in each texture of each palette. So uh, that's what we're looking for today. So the best method for um, tearing these palettes apart is using usually a hammer or a crowbar. What I like to do is put the crowbar down below the palette, hit my hammer into the crowbar, slide your crowbar a little farther in, and you can get a little bit of um, pressure to, uh, to pull these boards apart. Um, it's personal choice to get the nail out with a hammer or the crowbar. Sometimes the crowbar works better, but the hammer seems to be able to get lower nails. So if you don't quite pry the nail up far enough, um, you can always use the hammer. The hammer's always pretty good at applying leverage and, uh, getting that nail out. So when picking your pallets, you're going to want to choose pallets that don't have cracks on the ends where the nails are. Um, sometimes you're going to hit boards that will have those cracks. Uh, you can glue those boards back together, however, so keep that in mind as well. But I like to choose pellets that uh, don't have a lot of cracks by the nails. Like I said, if you were to use your pry bar and your hammer and force that pry bar underneath and pop it up, you're most likely going to crack the board, and then you don't have a full board to work with. If you can choose, choose boards with no cracks on the ends. So if you don't want to take the time to remove each nail one by one, there are some other options. You can cut the boards. However, you'll be losing out on some of your length in the boards. Uh, for this project, it will be okay to cut some of these boards because you're not going to need uh, very long boards. You'll probably only need about 13 inch, maybe 15 inch boards in length. Uh, so that is an option if you needed to. I like to tear them apart one by one. I like to keep the entire board, get the nails out of everything. That way you know you don't have any nails left in there. But you do have the option to cut them out. So I do like to show that you can use hand tools on some of this stuff. It is a lot more work and you're going to be hurting afterwards trust me but you can if if the 
board has nails in the end of it and it's cracking and it's not coming out you don't have a saw but you have a handsaw it is possible it's just going to take you a lot more time to get those boards apart so to start your project off you're going to want to choose three boards um, cut them to about 15 to 17 inches in length and these were about three to maybe two and a half inches in width i think all together my project was 17 inches tall and 11 inches wide yours can be roughly those same sizes if you'd prefer a little longer a little wider that's kind of a personal preference but mine was 17 tall 11 wide and what i did is i started ripping them on the table saw i want that rustic look still however if i had gaps in my seams uh, it wouldn't turn out the way i really wanted it to you're still going to get that rustic look with the thickness of the boards sometimes being a little more um, thicker than others so it'll offset a little bit. And here I'm just making sure everything is to proper length. I had one of the boards that was a bit long um, so I was cutting everything down to 17 inches so that it would all be the proper length for my project. What you're going to want to do is, if you have all three of your boards laying in front of you, squish them together and measure the width of your project. You're going to want to cut three more boards the exact same width as your project. So mine was 11 inches. I cut three more boards to 11 inches. And what those will do is one is your bottom piece, so where you can screw in your um, coat rack or your key holder. And one is for the top piece that holds the top all together. And your third piece is for your mail slot. If you wanted a mail slot, I put a mail slot in. Uh, and if you're copying my project, that's what that's for. So if you have any leftovers that you cracked, but there's still, you know, both of the pieces there, there's just cracked on the middle and it's two separate pieces. This is kind of the perfect project for that. Uh, you see here in this in this clip that I have, I'm basically putting the two back together so it looks like one board, measuring perfectly 11 inches, and then cutting those two boards. So they're unison. What I'll do next is I'll staple them or glue them or nail them in their appropriate spots, and it still gives you that kind of rustic look, like you know it's split, you can see that it's split. However... It looks good because it is still unison in one piece. So some issues I had while putting this project together, um, I have two inch or inch and a half nails and they were just too long. I probably could have gotten away with one inch nails. If you have one inch nails, they'd probably be better. Uh, but even one inch nails might stick through. So what you can do is, I'll show you later in the video, I grinded down the back of the nail with a grinding tool or a um, just a wire grinder like in a shop or something like that that you can use. Uh, I, I basically just ground down the nail so it didn't stick through and it's still flush flat. Nothing's going to snag on it. Uh, but I'm basically just putting these boards on to keep everything together. These two kind of hold everything. They act as the glue. And then I'll be putting on my mail slot pretty soon and I will show you step by step how I cut those.
Okay, basically, I cut, and I'll show you what I did, but <clears throat> I cut one of these squares out, okay, at a 45 degree angle from the corner here, okay, over. Uh, it's a little tricky trying to find the corner in this saw because, here I'll show you. It's tricky to find the corner sometimes because the saw doesn't like to sit. It doesn't go that far back, okay? So you kind of have to eyeball it through the blade. Um, and what I did is I brought it over to, I brought this piece over there and set it up and cut how much extra there was on it. And now all I'm doing is just cutting off the same size piece off that same slant that was there. Okay, so once you get your small triangles cut, what you're going to want to do is put them on your project where you want them to fit well, um, whether it's higher or lower. I put mine a little lower towards where my keys are going to sit. And then when you find where you want your left or right triangle to sit, mark it with a pencil, okay? And measure from the top of that bottom board up to where you marked that pencil mark and then go to the opposite side and mark that same distance. So if it's three and a half inches, I think mine was probably close to three and a quarter, um, or sorry, two and a quarter. If it's two and a quarter or two and three quarters or whatever it is, mark that same distance on your right side to make everything even. And then you're gonna go ahead and nail them or glue them in. So here I'm showing you that my nails were too long. They were two inches or inch and a half. I think I started with inch and a half in them. I ran out and all I had was two and a halves, uh, which I knew were too long. So what I'm doing is I'm grinding them down. Like I said, you can use a grinding tool or a, uh, a shop grinder, something of the sorts. Uh, basically, you're just trying to get them down. If you don't have one of those, you can bend them back and use like a hammer or something to like bend them down and nail them down like flatter but you'd probably be better off grinding them off
So I bought a pack of these hooks from Home Depot. Uh, it came in kind of a set with like normal hooks that are fully closed uh, in a variety of sizes. But these hooks, I only needed three of them. And what I did is I drilled the same or similar to size as um, the screw's width or circumference. I drilled that into my boards maybe about a fourth of an inch or maybe half an inch deep. And then it makes it a lot easier to start your screw and continue your screw. Uh, the first one I put in, I did not drill. And trust me when I tell you it was not easy. Uh, this made my life so much easier. So I would suggest using a drill if you have one. Drilling down, like I said, half, half inch maybe. And uh, that will make the process a whole lot easier. All right, and honestly, that's it. We uh, used the Cricut to put some words on it. We put nail at the top and keys at the bottom. I mean, you can do what you want. Uh, I think it looks great. It turned out great. If you want to clear coat it or stain it, that's all you. Like I said in the beginning, I kept mine pretty rustic and uh, I left it to be, you know, with that raw wood and palette feel. All right, thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, I appreciate everything you guys do, and hopefully you guys like the style of editing out of me. That's not a typical style I do, but I, I enjoyed making it, and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. Thanks.